Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to upgrade your SSD in your Legion Go. I'll show you how to use a 2230 size SSD with an adapter in case you're looking to do that as well. To start things off, we'll take a look at everything you need to do this upgrade. To do this upgrade, we're going to need the following. We're going to need a Phillips number one and number zero screwdriver, a guitar pick, a USB-C dock, a SSD enclosure that connects via USB, a 2242 size SSD or a 2230 with an adapter, your charger, and some cloning software. Now that we know what we need, we can go ahead and prep our new SSD into the enclosure. If you have a 2242 size, you can go ahead and plug it in without these extra steps. But if you're looking to use a 2230 size with an adapter, I'll show you how to get that ready to go. First, you'll want to grab your SSD, and then we just need to take our adapter and attach the correct size. So you can see that there's a number of different notches here. I've already broken off the correct one. You can go all the way up to a 2280 size with this adapter, but obviously we're just going to go ahead and use the 2242 for today. Getting it ready is super easy. You just need to slide that under the screw and then screw it down tight. Make sure that you're using a PH1 size screwdriver so you don't strip the screw. You don't need to tighten it super hard, just tighten it enough so that it's secure, and then you can see that you have a 2242 size. This will fit perfectly fine in the Legion Go, even though it sticks up just a little bit. And now lastly, you could take your SSD and just plug it into the enclosure. You just slot it in, push it down. And with this particular enclosure, it has a nice little rubber piece, so you don't need to use a screw. All you need to do is insert the rubber piece, rotate it so that it covers the SSD, and then slide it back into the enclosure. And now your SSD is ready to go. You'll just use that USB-C port to plug your SSD enclosure into the dock. Next, you'll want to plug in your charger into your USB-C hub or dock. And then finally, you need to connect your dock or USB-C hub to your Legion Go. And now that we have everything connected and ready to go, we can go to our Legion Go and download the cloning software and get things ready. I'm going to switch to my screen recording so you can see it a little bit more clearly. Now we can go ahead and get some software to actually do the cloning. So today we're going to use Macrium Reflect because it offers a free month trial so you could just get the trial and get it done. No need to purchase if you're only going to be using it the once. Now you can just click on the link for their website and scroll down till you find the trial for the home edition. We don't need any other editions, just scroll all the way down for Reflect 8 Home Trial. Once you click next, you're going to see that you're going to need to enter your email here. So go ahead and enter your email. And once you've done that, then just click continue. Here you can opt in or out of emails. I would just leave it and click download. Once you've finished that, you can check your email and you'll get an email that looks kind of like this that will have your registration code along with a link that you need to click to register. Copy your registration code and then click on the link in the email. The link will automatically start your download. So once that's finished, go ahead and click on the .exe file and then just go ahead and click on the download button. My screen recording actually glitched here, so don't be thrown off by the ROG Ally section that I'm going to show next. It's the same steps on both devices. Now once it's installed, go ahead and press accept. And this is where you put your license key if you purchased, but we got the trial, so we're just going to make sure that's checked and click next. And then it'll tell you when it's going to expire and you can go ahead and start. So you'll need to input your registration code that you got from your email, as well as input your email address, the same one that you'd use to sign up. Then we can click next and we'll click next again and install. Click finish and you should be good to go. Once you're done installing, one thing to note is you will have to reboot your system again. Once you've finished rebooting, let's search for Macrium Reflect and go ahead and open up the app. Once the app opens up, you can go ahead and select your theme. So I'm going to select dark mode, and then you can move on to the actual cloning process. You'll want to click on clone this disk, and you'll want to make sure that the right destination is selected. So let's click on this to make sure. And I'm going to click on my one terabyte drive, as that's the one that I want to use. Next, you want to click on copy partitions, then click on shrink or extend to fill the target disk. This will ensure that all of the extra storage that you're gaining here is actually accessible to you, and it's not put in some partition that you don't have access to. So now we can go ahead and click next and then click next again. So you can give this a review if you want or just go ahead and skip past it and press next. Now for the backup save option, you can change where it's saved or what it's called, or you can just go ahead and press OK. Now it's going to run through the cloning process. This takes a few minutes, so we'll come back when it's done. And now that it's done, we can go ahead and close it and check to make sure that everything actually worked. And if we check File Explorer, you can see that everything is copied over to my new SSD. So it looks like we're good to go, so let's shut down and get started with the install process. Now we can go ahead and work on installing the SSD itself. So first we're going to ensure that our device is actually powered down, and once we've confirmed that, we can go ahead and remove the controllers. To do that, it's very simple. Just press the eject button, apply a little pressure downward, and pull it out. Now just repeat on the other side and put both controllers aside. Now we need to remove the six screws. So there's three on each side. They're very 
very obvious to see, so we're just going to take those out and then we can take the shell off. For taking out the screws, make sure to use a PH0 screwdriver. The screws are all the same size, so don't worry about mixing them up, and I would suggest putting them somewhere safe like the tray I have up above here. And now that we have all six screws removed, we can move on to using our guitar pick to start popping the clips. I recommend starting in the corner here and you're going to need to wedge it in, so you'll need to apply a little bit of force, but nothing too extreme. And once you've got it in there, you can go ahead and start prying up. Now you'll want to go around the whole thing doing the same thing, just applying a little bit of pressure up and popping the clips. Just take your time with this, make sure that you're properly popping the clips and that you're not breaking anything. You'll also want to raise up the kickstand so you can get in the bottom properly. Once you've ensured that all the clips are popped, you can go ahead and pull on the back casing and it should pull straight off. There's no ribbon cables on the back casing, so don't worry about pulling it away from the shell. One thing that you may want to check for is to see if you've accidentally turned it on. So I actually turned it on by a mistake when I was doing this. I guess I accidentally pressed the power button. So just inspect it to make sure that it's not powered on. And if it was powered on accidentally, just make sure you shut it down just like I did here. And now back to the SSD install. So first thing we need to do is actually unplug the battery. So I took off the little sticker that was on top of the battery plug. You can see it hanging off the side of the shell. And we're also going to need to take off this other sticker that's covering up the SSD, but also prevents the battery cable from lifting up. And now that we've lifted it up, you can see that the SSD is exposed and we can easily grab the battery cable to pull it out. Go ahead and set the battery cable aside and now we can move on to getting out the SSD. An important note is for the SSD screw you need a PH1 so don't use the same one that you used for the shell, make sure that you switch over. These little screws are a little bit infamous for stripping so make sure that you're using the correct size to prevent that. And once the screw is removed make sure to put it aside in a safe place and we can go ahead and take out our SSD. So you just want to pull it up and then pull it straight back once you have it lifted up so you can get the SSD out. Now grab your new SSD and slot it in. All you have to do is push it in at an angle and then press down. Then put your screw back in, make sure you don't over tighten it. And then next you can go ahead and plug your battery back in and then press the sticker back down. And don't forget to put the battery sticker back on as well. Now you just need to put your back cover on. So make sure that you line it up and you're gonna have to press actually a little harder than you would expect. So just make sure that you have everything lined up as you go along. Once you think that you're done, make sure you visually inspect it that there isn't anything popped up anywhere. I would recommend checking underneath the kickstand because that one wasn't popped in for me. Now we can go ahead and put the six screws back in. Make sure that you switch back to the PH0 size screwdriver or screwdriver bit. I find that during these little switchovers for screw bits that that's often when screws get stripped. So I figured I'd throw a little reminder your way just so it doesn't happen to you. And now that we have it back together, we can just put our controllers back on and then turn it on to check. One thing that I wanted to make note of is because we unplug the battery and change the SSD, it's going to take significantly longer to boot up. So don't panic, it's going to be completely fine. It just takes about a couple minutes and you'll see this logo pop up just like this. And now that we've signed in, let's just confirm that we have access to the full storage. So go to this computer and just double check and you can see that I have a full terabyte here to use. So everything went as planned for me, I hope it did for you as well. If this video is helpful, consider leaving me a like, subscribe to the channel, I'm planning to make more Legion Go content soon. I hope that you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.